Chapter 8 Importance of Human Birth As hinted in the last chapter Hemad Pan now explains at length in his preliminary remarks the importance of human birth and then proceeds to relate how Sai Baba begged his food how Bai Zabai served him how he slept in the masjid with Tatya Kote Patil and Mahasapati and how he loved Khushal Chand of Rahata Importance of human birth In this wonderful universe God has created millions 84 lakhs according to Hindu shastra calculation of creatures including gods demigods insects beasts and men inhabiting heaven hell earth ocean sky and other intermediate regions of these those creatures or souls whose merits preponderate go to heaven and live there till they enjoy the fruits of their actions and when this is done they are cast down while those souls who sins or demerits preponderate go down to hell and suffer the consequences of their misdeeds for as long as they deserve it when their merits and demerits balance each other they are born on the earth as human beings and are given a chance to work out their salvation ultimately when their merits and demerits both are worked out completely they get their deliverance and become free to put the matter in a nutshell souls get their birth or trans migration according to their deeds and evolvement special value of the human body as we all know four things are common to all the creatures that is food sleep fear and sexual union in the case of man he is endowed with a special faculty that is knowledge with the help of which he can attain god vision which is impossible in any other species it is for this reason that god envies the human species and aspires to be born as men on earth so as to get their final deliverance some say that there is nothing worse than the human body which is full of filth mucus film and dirt which is subject to decay disease and death this is true to a certain extent but in spite of these drawbacks and defects the special value of the human body is that man has got the capacity to acquire knowledge it is only due to the human body or account of it that one can think of the perishable and the transitory nature of the body itself and of the world and have adverse for sense enjoyment and can discriminate between the unreal and the real and thus attain god vision so if we reject or neglect the body because it is filthy we lose the chance of god vision and if we indulge in it and run after sense enjoyments because it is precious we go to hell the proper course therefore for us to pursue is the following that the body should neither be neglected nor fondled but should be properly cared for just as a traveler on a horseback takes care of his horse on the way till he reaches his destination and returns home thus the body should ever be used or engaged to attain god vision or self realization which is the supreme end of life it is said that though god created various kind of creatures he was not satisfied for none of them was able to know and appreciate his work so he had to create a special being man and endow him with a special faculty that is knowledge and when he saw that man was able to appreciate his leela marvelous work and intelligence he was highly pleased and satisfied this is from bhagavat 11928 so really it is fortunate to get a human body better still 
to be born in a brahmin family and best to get an opportunity of being close to sai baba's feet and surrendering to him man's endeavor realizing how precious human life is and knowing that death is certain and may snatch us at any time we should be ever alert to achieve the object of our lives and we should not make the least delay but make every possible haste to gain our object just as a king leaves no stone unturned to seek his lost son so with all earnestness we should strive to attain our end that is self realization casting aside laziness warding off drowsiness we should day and night meditate on the self if we fail to do this we reduce ourselves to the level of beasts how to proceed the most effective and speedy way to gain our object is to approach a worthy saint or sage sadguru who has himself attained god vision what cannot be achieved by hearing religious discourses and study of religious texts is easily obtained in the company of such worthy souls just as the sun only gives light which all the stars put together cannot do so the sadguru alone imparts spiritual wisdom which all the sacred books and sermons cannot do his movements and simple talks give us silent advice the virtues of forgiveness calmness disinterestedness charity benevolence control of mind and body egolessness etc are observed by the disciples as they are being practiced in such pure and holy company this enlightens their mind and lifts them up spiritually sai baba was such a sage or sadguru though he acted as a fakir he was always engrossed in self he always loved all beings in whom he saw god or divinity by pleasures he was not elated he was not depressed by misfortunes a king and a pauper were the same to him he whose glance would turn a beggar into a king used to go begging for food from door to door in shirdi and let us now see how he did it baba begging food blessed are the people of shirdi in front of whose houses baba stood as a beggar and called out oh my give me a piece of bread and spread out his hand to receive the same in one hand he carried a tamrail a tin pot and in the other a jholi or a chaupardri that is a rectangular piece of cloth he visited certain houses daily liquid or semi liquid things such as soup vegetables milk or buttermilk were received in the tin pot while cooked rice bread and such solid things were taken in the jholi baba's tongue knew no taste as he had acquired control over it so how could he care for the taste of different things mixed up together whatever things he got in his jholi and in the tin pot were mixed together and partaken by baba to his heart's content whether particular things were tasty or otherwise was never noticed by baba as his tongue was devoid of the sense of taste altogether baba begged till him but his begging was very irregular some days he went a few rounds on other days at 12 noon the food thus collected was kept in a kundi that is earthen pot dogs cats and crows freely ate from it and baba never drove them away the woman who swept the floor of the masjid took some 10 12 pieces of bread to her house and nobody prevented her from doing so how could he who ever in dreams never warded off cats and dogs by harsh words and signs refuse food to poor helpless people blessed indeed 
is the life of such a noble person people in shirdi took him in the beginning for a mad fakir he was known in the village by this time how could one who lived on arms by begging a few crumbs of bread be revered and worshiped but this fakir was very liberal at heart detached and charitable though he looked restless from outside he was firm and steady inside his way was inscrutable still in that small village there were a few kind and blessed people who recognized and regarded him as a great soul one such person's account is given below baiza bai's brilliant service tatya kotte patil's mother baiza bai used to go to the woods every afternoon with a basket on her head containing bread and vegetables she roamed in the jungles course about 3 miles after course trampling bushes and shrubs in search of the mad fakir and after finding him fell at his feet the fakir sat calm and motionless in meditation while she placed a leaf before him spread her things eatables bread vegetables etc thereon and fed him wonderful was her faith and service every day she roamed at afternoon in the jungles and insisted upon baba to partake of the lunch her service upasana or penance by whatever name we call it was never forgotten by baba till the end remembering fully what service she rendered baba benefited her son significantly both the son and the mother had great faith in the fakir who was their god baba often said to them that fakiri is real lordship riches is transient after some years baba stopped going into the woods and began to live in the village and take his food in the masjid thus baiza bai's troubles of roaming in the jungles ended dormitory of trio ever blessed are the saints in whose heart lord vasudev dwells and fortunate indeed are the devotees who get the benefit of the company of such saints two such fortunate fellows tatya kote patel <laughs> and bhagat mahasapati equally shared the company of sai baba baba also loved them both equally these three persons slept in the masjid with their heads towards the east west and north and with their feet touching one another at the center after spreading their beds they lay on them chit chatting and gossiping till late at night if any one of them showed any sign of sleep others would wake him up for instance if tatya began to snore baba at once got up and shook him from side to side and pressed his head if it was mahasapati he pulled him close stroked his legs and patted his back in this way for a period of 14 years tatya leaving his parents at home slept in the masjid on account of his deep love for baba how happy and never to be forgotten were those days how to measure that love and how to value the grace of baba after the passing away of his father tatya took charge of the household affairs and began to sleep at home khushal chand of rahata baba loved ganpat kote patil of shirdi he loved chandrabhan sheth marwadi of rahata equally after the demise of their sheth baba loved his nephew khushal chand equally or perhaps more and looked after his welfare day and night sometimes in a bullock cart and other times in a tonga with intimate devotees baba went to rahata people of that village would come out with band and music and receive baba at the gate of the village and prostrate before him then he was taken into the village with great honor and ceremony khushal chand took baba to his house seated him on a comfortable seat and gave him a good meal then they talked freely and merrily for some time after which baba returned to shirdi giving delight and blessings to all shirdi is midway and equidistant from rahata on one side south and nimgaon on the other side north baba never went beyond these two places during his lifetime 
he never saw any train nor travelled by it still he knew exactly the timings of arrivals and departures of all trains devotees who acted according to baba's instructions given at the time of taking his leave fared well while those who disregarded him suffered many a mishap and accident more about this and other matters will be told in the next chapter bow to shri sai peace to all om sai ram